we're going to look at one final example of how trigonometry can be used, and this time we're going to use trigonometry in order to find an unknown angle. In this case, the angle that we're trying to find is the angle theta. Just to reiterate, the process is exactly the same. So the first step to solving any trigonometry problem is to label our triangle. While labelling our triangle, our longest side, or the side opposite the right angle, is H. The side opposite the angle that we're given, or that we're trying to find, is the opposite. In this case, we're trying to find the angle theta, so that's the angle that's involved in our calculations. And the remaining side is our adjacent. In this case, the adjacent is going to play very little part in our calculations, because if we return to our soccer toa, we can see that this time we know the hypotenuse. Well, there's two of these that contain an H. And we also know the opposite. So the equation or the format that we're going to be using is this one here. And this states that sine of theta equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. Well, this time, what we're trying to find is theta. So now we can introduce a new function. Now, if we're using sine, the inverse function of sine is called sine to the minus 1. Therefore, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to do sine to the minus 1 of each side, the inverse sine. Well, if we do sine to the minus 1 of the left-hand side, sine to the minus 1 of sine cancels itself out. It's the inverse function. So we'll just be left with theta. And then we're going to do sine to the minus 1 of the right-hand side. And the way that we would write this is sine to the minus 1 in brackets opposite over hypotenuse. The reason being is we're doing sine to the minus 1 of all of the right-hand side. And all of the right-hand side was opposite over hypotenuse. So to finish, theta equals sine to the minus 1. The opposite we know is 0.24 metres. The hypotenuse we know is 0.32 metres. And if we run that through our calculators, we'll get theta equals 48.59 degrees. So we've just said there that the inverse of sine is sine to the minus 1. Well, the inverse of cos is cos to the minus 1, and the inverse of tan is tan to the minus 1. You would apply these in exactly the same way. So if we used this equation in a calculation to find theta, We've got cos theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Therefore, theta equals cos to the minus 1 of adjacent over hypotenuse. So we can use that equation to find angle theta if the other variables are known. And if we were to use tan theta or toa, well, if tan theta equals opposite over adjacent, then theta just equals tan to the minus 1 of opposite over adjacent. So all three of those can actually be used to find theta depending on what variables are known for the triangle. So I thought that it would be beneficial just to spend a couple of minutes showing you where some of these functions are on your calculator, but also to show you how you switch between radians and degrees modes on your calculator. I'll show you how to input sine, cosine, sine to the minus 1, and so on as well. So first of all, the thing that you're looking for on the display of your calculator is on the top line here. And what you're looking for is either a capital D or a capital R. Capital D represents degrees, and capital R represents radians. Now it's really important whenever you're inputting sine, cosine, sine to the minus 1, any of these trigonometric functions into your calculator, it's important to make sure that it's in the correct mode. In the majority of these questions, you'll be using degrees or inputting values in degrees. Therefore, you must ensure that you have a D displayed at the top here. Now, if it's displaying a capital R for radians and you want to switch it to degrees mode, on this particular calculator, you would press Shift and then this button here, which is Mode or Setup. Shift and that button there takes you into the Setup menu for the calculator. 
and then you'll have a list of numbers relating to different functions. Now on that list, number 3 will be degrees, number 4 will be radians. Therefore, from that list, pressing number 3 would switch your calculator into degrees mode. And vice versa, if you wanted to switch it back to radians, you'd press shift, set up, and then instead of pressing 3 for degrees, you would press 4 for radians. So that's how you switch between the two functions on the calculator. Now when it comes to inputting sine and cosine functions, let's say for example I wanted to input 5 cos 48 degrees. I would press 5 cos. The calculator would then display cos open brackets. So I would then need to do 48 for my 48 degrees and then I would have to close the brackets before hitting equals. Okay, so make sure you pay attention to what's shown on the display. And all calculators will vary slightly, but just pay attention if it's showing an open bracket, then we need to close the bracket. If we wanted to input something along the lines of cos to the minus 1 of 5 over 8, then once again, we would need to first of all input cos to the minus 1. So on this calculator, we would press shift to enter the second function mode. We would then press cos. But you notice just above the cos button it says cos to the minus 1. Well that's actually what we're inputting because we've entered the second function mode. So we've pressed shift, we've pressed cos, or shift cos is cos to the minus 1. And the display will show cos to the minus 1 open brackets. So once again we would input our 5 divided by 8 for our 5 over 8. And then we would have to remember to close the brackets once again before hitting equals. You'll have an opportunity to input some of these on the practice questions, so have a play around with this and make sure you're familiar with the functions on your calculator.